Hello! In this video, we will continue our discussion of integration techniques by considering the integration of rational functions by partial fractions. We'll explore this topic across two videos. This first video, we'll look at some of the basics or the rules to apply when using partial fractions and give an example which includes linear factors in the denominator. Why do we use partial fractions? Well, in previous courses, you have worked with fractions that can be expressed as two or more simpler fractions in order to ease calculations. Suppose we look at the sum 1 3rd plus 1 4th equals 7 twelfths. You've seen this arise when you wanted to calculate, for example, the cosine as 7 pi over 12, and we could use partial fractions, 1 3rd and 1 4th, to sum them and write 7 twelfths. So for example, cosine of 7 pi over 12 is the same thing as the cosine of pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Now you may not know the cosine of 7 pi over 12, but you should know the cosine and the sine of both angles pi over 3 and pi over 4. Now you should also know the angle addition formula for cosine which is the cosine of the first angle times the cosine of the second angle minus the sine of the first angle times the sine of the second angle. You know the cosine and sine of both of those angles, and you can easily calculate and finish that computation. So decomposing 7 pi over 12 facilitated the evaluation of cosine of 7 pi over 12 using known cosine and sine values of basic angles of the unit circles. In a similar way, there are times a rational function, which needs to be integrated, can be decomposed into two or more simple rational functions which make integration possible. These simple, simpler rational functions are called partial fractions. Now there are some rules that have to be applied and followed in order to successfully perform the method of partial fractions. Suppose the rational function can be expressed as f of x over g of x, where f and g are both polynomials. First of all, the degree of the numerator, f of x, must be less than the degree of the denominator, g of x, if the degree of, of the numerator, f of x, is the same as or greater than the degree of the denominator, g of x, we have to perform long division before continuing. Secondly, we have to know the factors of the denominator. Every polynomial g of x having real numbers as coefficients can be factored into linear and or irreducible quadratic factors having real coefficients. Next, the form taken by the partial fractions depends on the type of factors for g of x, our denominator, including if g of x has repeated factors or irreducible quadratics. So, Suppose x minus r is a linear factor of g of x. And not only x minus r is a factor, but x minus r to some power k is the highest power of x minus r that divides g of x. The sum of k partial fractions associated with x minus r to the k is some constant a divided by x minus r plus some other constant, a sub 2 divided by x minus r squared, plus some other constant, a sub 3 divided by x minus r cubed, and you continue up through k fractions. Okay. Secondly, if we have an irreducible quadratic factor of g of x, which we'll call x squared plus p times x plus q, and x squared plus px plus q to the jth power is the highest power of x squared plus px plus q that divides g of x, that denominator, then the sum of the j partial fractions associated with x squared plus px plus q to the jth power is each of these numerators is a linear function divided by a power of the irreducible quadratic. So I would have b1 and c1 both being constant, so I have b1 times x plus c1 over x squared plus px plus q. The second partial fraction would be another constant, b sub 2 times x plus c sub 2 over x squared plus px plus q squared. And you would have j partial fractions associated with the highest power of that irreducible quadratic. 
So what does this look like? Let's consider briefly an example. Suppose I have 4x squared minus 3x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 times 2x minus 3 cubed times x squared plus x plus 5 squared. These powers on the factors tell us how many partial fractions we'll have associated with each factor. You don't see a 1 as the power of x plus 1, but it's there. So we're going to have one fraction associated with x plus 1 as a linear factor. So for example, I'm going to have a constant a divided by x plus 1, and that corresponds to that factor x plus 1 in the, in the denominator. The fact that I've got a 3 as the power of 2x minus 3 means I'm going to have three partial fractions associated with 2x minus 3. So I will have b1 over 2x minus 3 plus b2 over 2x minus 3 squared plus b3 over 2x minus 3 cubed. Then the last set of partial fractions correspond to x squared plus x plus 5 squared. The fact that I've got a 2 means I'm going to have two partial fractions associated with the factor x squared plus x plus 5. And then the fact that x squared plus x plus 5 is an irreducible quadratic, I will have um, linear terms in the numerator. So I have a c1, where c sub 1 is a constant, c sub 1 times x plus d sub 1, another constant, divided by x squared plus x plus 5, plus x sub 2, or c sub 2 times x plus c sub 2 over x squared plus x plus 5 squared. So I have a total of six partial fractions associated with this rational function. Once we have identified the partial fractions, we will set the original fraction f of x over g of x equal to the sum of the partial fractions. Then we'll multiply both sides by g of x in order to clear the equation of fractions. We'll distribute the constants across the different terms and identify and collect the powers of x. So we'll collect all the first powers of x, we'll collect all the second powers of x, and so on. And we'll look at the coefficients of those powers of x and equate the coefficients from the two sides to determine what those coefficients should be. Let's go through an example. Suppose I'd like to evaluate the integral of 2x plus 15 over 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. I want you to first pause the video and I want you to factor the denominator. If you don't remember how to factor, you might want to look up either in a textbook or in, uh, in a video and just practice and recall and practice how to factor polynomials, okay? But we can see that the denominator factors is 3x minus 2 times x plus, x plus 4. So the form of the partial fractions is that I will take 2x plus 15 over 3x minus 2 times x plus 4, and I will set it equal to a over 3x minus 2 plus b over x plus 4. And a and b will be constants. They'll be real numbers. So first, I will multiply both sides times 3x minus 2 times x plus 4, and I will get 2x plus 15 equals a times x plus 4 plus b times 3x minus 2. Next, I'll distribute a across x plus 4 and b across 3x minus 2, and then I will collect all the linear terms, the terms involving x, and I'll collect all the constant terms. And I will note 2x must equal a plus 3b times x, and 15 must equal 4a minus 2b. So I will have two equations and two unknowns, the two unknowns being a and b. And I can use my algebraic techniques, whichever you would prefer, to solve for a and b. So in this case, I just demonstrate how I can solve for b and get b equals negative 1 half. I can substitute b equals negative 1 half back into one of the equations and find that a is equal to 7 halves. Now, I'll return to my integral and note that 2x plus 15 over 3x minus 2 times x plus 4 is now just 7 halves over 3x minus 2 plus negative 1 half over x plus 4. And so I can rewrite my integral as such. And now to integrate, I can pull those constants out in front 
and I will see that I've got linear factors in the denominator of each integrand. And so therefore each is just a form of the natural log. You can perform a u substitution with that first integral if you prefer, but regardless you'll see that the integral becomes 1 third times the natural log of the absolute value of 3x minus 2, which will multiply times 7 halves, minus 1 half times the natural log of x plus 4 in absolute value plus c, just a little bit of simplification. And you could take the derivative and see if you get back to 2x plus 15 over 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. So let's review some of the key pieces of using partial fraction decomposition. This is an algebraic technique used to convert complicated rational functions into the sum or difference of simpler rational functions which are more easily integrated. You have to know and be able to apply the rules associated with partial fraction decomposition. Once you know how the denominator factors, you can apply the rules of partial fraction decomposition to identify the number of fractions or the number of rational functions required and how many constants are needed in the numerators in order to complete the decomposition. In the next video, we'll include another example using partial fraction decomposition, but this time with an irreducible quadratic factor in the denominator.